Threat. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to DFB TV. Today we're taking a look at the new 16 inch variant of the Ruger MPR. The MPR series is a higher end version of Ruger's mil spec style AR556 series rifles. The original version has an 18 inch barrel with a mid length gas system. This one just knocks a couple inches off the barrel and has a couple of other minor changes, but overall I think it's probably the superior rifle. The MPRs have a lot more modern features than the AR556. I think of the AR-556 as kind of a budget rifle and the MPR as more of an entry level option. The MPR makes for a much more scalable platform. The only issue with the 18 inch one is that it's a bit on the long side. The 16 inch version is still gonna be plenty accurate and plenty effective out to the ranges you're probably going to use this for. But it's a little lighter and a little shorter so it's a little bit more adaptable for different scenarios. I've tested this rifle in a couple different configurations. We're going to talk about those. We're also going to talk about why you might go with an MPR versus a more expensive rifle. The 16-inch MPR makes for a good comparison versus the BCM Recce 16. They both have 16-inch barrels, mid-length gas systems, full-length M-Lock free float handguards. They both come in at approximately the same weight. The difference is that the Ruger has an MSRP of 900 bucks and the BCM has an MSRP of about 1300 bucks. If we're just talking normal pricing, Rugers do not typically sell all the way up at MSRP, and I've also really never seen a great deal on a BCM Recce. So in peaceful times, the Ruger would probably cost about half as much as the BCM. Obviously nothing is selling for normal prices right now, but we're still going to use that as a jumping off point for an argument about value. So first let's talk about the configuration of this rifle as it comes from the factory, starting with the lower. The MPR uses the same basic receiver sets from the AR556, pretty much nothing spectacular there. The controls are pretty basic, although this one does have an ambidextrous safety lever. I'm not a big fan of that feature because I'm not left-handed, and the safety lever intrudes into the path of my index finger when I'm actually pulling the trigger. The grip and the stock are both from B5 Systems. The grip has a very steep angle, which I find to be a lot more comfortable than your classic A2 style grip. It's also got fantastically aggressive checkering. This is actually one of the grips that I use on my 11.3 AR pistol. The stock is pretty good as well. The adjustment is nice and positive. It's got a really solid cheek weld. The only thing that I don't like about it is the really soft recoil pad, which tends to stick on clothing. Ruger ships these guns with a Gen 2 30 round P mag, at least in states where that is legal. Although I think I accidentally put a Gen 3 P mag in the gun for this filming, so just ignore that. The trigger is where things get interesting. That is the Ruger Elite two stage trigger. It's the same one used in the 18 inch MPR. You can also buy it as a drop-in upgrade for any other AR you happen to have. I don't really like two-stage triggers. I usually prefer a quality improved mil-spec style trigger, either the QMS or the ACT from ALG. That's a bunch of bullshit letters, but it basically boils down to a trigger that looks, feels, and performs identical to a mil-spec trigger, except with a cleaner break and a lighter pull. I'm less of a trigger snob than probably anybody you will ever meet, so take my advice with a grain of salt. The Ruger Elite two-stage trigger is pretty fantastic. It's got that weird soft take-up that is pretty typical for two stages. It's excellent for rested precision shooting, but it's also really fast if you want to do some gamer splits. Moving on to the upper, we again have a standard flat top upper receiver, a standard mil-spec charging handle, and a standard M16 style bolt carrier group. Ruger had some complaints in the past about using an SP1, like a sporter style bolt carrier group in their guns, but I think they stopped doing that. At the front of the gun, you have got a 16 inch mid-length gas cold hammer forged 1 and 8 twist barrel. I'm not Joe Accuracy, but for my testing, this is an extremely accurate gun, probably owing to that trigger and that barrel. The rail is different than the 18 inch version of the gun. It's still a free float with M-Lock on the 3, 6, and 9. However, a significant portion of the 12 o'clock Picatinny rail section has been removed for weight savings and comfort if you shoot thumb over bore. There's still a section of Picatinny at the 12 o'clock front position for mounting backup iron sights. There's also one at the back, and I'm not entirely sure what that's for. If you were mounting a high magnification scope on standard rings, I guess you could put one of those rings on the handguard. I don't know why, I wouldn't want to do that myself, and also cantilever scope mounts have existed for a pretty long time now, so it doesn't really seem like there's much point to it. Honestly, I would have preferred Ruger to leave the entire 12 o'clock rail section intact on this handguard. If you don't have a lot of rail section at the front, that doesn't give you a lot of room for mounting something like an infrared laser unit. I tested this with night vision using a small standalone infrared laser unit, and that took up all of the rail space that you have on this gun. So you can't mount an IR laser behind an iron sight. You also don't really have a good way to attach a tape switch behind a laser unit or flashlight. I assume most of that 12 o'clock rail section was removed for weight savings more so than it was for comfort. 
However, a BCM Recce 16, which is almost identical to this gun on paper, still weighs a half pound less, and that has a full length top rail. I would consider that full length top rail to be good weight and worth keeping around, but that's just my mileage. The muzzle device on the MPR is Ruger's extremely aggressive radial compensator. This thing is very, very effective, but it's also very obnoxious. This is one of the loudest compensators I've ever shot, and I've played with a couple of really bad ones before. That radial compensator does make the gun extremely flat shooting, and it doesn't have nearly as much flash as a lot of single chamber brakes that I've tried. But it does so at the cost of your hearing. It really is one of the most obnoxious brakes I've ever used. Kind of curious how much of the soft shooting nature of the 16 inch MPR is just due to that insanely aggressive radial compensator. So I've taken it off. There's just a thread protector on there right now. I'm just gonna shoot a couple rounds of uh, Wolf steel case, see how it feels without the extremely aggressive comp on there. Well, the 16 inch mid gas system, still really smooth. And I believe this is just a three ounce carbine buffer. So you could definitely adjust the buffer weight if you really needed to. This gun is not nearly as flat shooting with the extremely aggressive compensator removed, but it's still really smooth. I'm very impressed by how well that's tuned. So even without that compensator, this is still a soft shooting, very well tuned gun. 16 inch barrels with a mid-length gas system have a reputation of being smooth and comfortable guns to shoot, and that seems to be the case here. The gun also seems to be tuned pretty well. It ejects empties at about 230 with standard range ammo. My Form 4 cleared just as I was about to finish testing this gun, so I took it out for one last little range trip to try it with a suppressor. When I tested the Ruger AR556 pistol, I had a lot of reliability issues with steel case, and the Ruger ARs kind of have a reputation for not really liking steel case all that much. I tested this one with a lot of steel case as well, and I had a few issues, but it was really difficult to tell if they were magazine related or gun related. Other than that, I had no major reliability issues with this gun. It certainly handled steel case a lot better than the AR556 pistol did. The appeal of the 16 inch version of the MPR is that it's so versatile. The 18 inch made sense mostly as a dedicated SPR. Shortening the barrel by two inches makes this version a bit more handy and allows you to flex it into a couple of different rolls. I tested this out with a high mounted red dot and an infrared laser for night vision use. I also tested it out with a high magnification scope. If I was going to make this my go-to AR, I would probably stick with either a red dot and magnifier or an LPVO. Both of those are pretty good, pretty flexible options for a pretty good, pretty flexible rifle. Let's talk about configuring this gun for use with night vision. That gives us a good opportunity to talk about value and hop at the range may have something to say about that. So here's how we got this thing set up. We've got a Sig Romeo 5 on a ScalarWorks 1.93 NV height riser. That's for passive shooting with night vision. Up at the front on the 12 o'clock, we've got a Holosun 117 IR. That's an IR laser for active night vision shooting. We've also got a Surefire 300 Scout Light with a KM1, which is an IR and white dual mode head. These are both slaved to a Unity tapped pressure switch. We've also got Magpul rail covers for a little bit of extra traction. We've also got a QD sling swivel attachment up on the handguard. We've got a BFG Vickers sling. It's not my favorite sling, but it's one that I had spare. And on two QDs, one at the front, one at the back. So all told, there's about $1,000 worth of accessories on this rifle, and that's just for bare minimum night vision capability. We could definitely spend a lot more if we wanted to. Okay, time for the value proposition of the MPR-16. If you came to me and you said that you had $1,500 to spend on an AR, you might think that I would recommend the BCM Recce 16, because I keep talking about it and it's a really fantastic all-around rifle. However, if you've got $1,500, you definitely shouldn't buy a BCM Recce 16. You should buy a Ruger MPR 16 and a whole bunch of accessories for it. Which do you think is more effective, the fully assembled version of the MPR that I showed you in this video, 
or a BCM Recce 16 with no spare magazines, no sling, no weapon light, no iron sights, no optic, and no ammunition. Basically what I'm saying is you shouldn't spend your entire budget just on the rifle. There's a whole lot of other stuff you need to put on there before it becomes an effective tool. A red dot, a sling, and a weapon light are not even luxuries anymore. Those are necessities. So don't blow your entire budget on an optics-ready AR that you won't even be able to shoot until you can afford some sights for it. See what I'm saying? Anyway, if you take value into consideration, I think the Ruger MPR-16 is the best AR you can buy right now. It can do basically anything depending on how you configure it, and since you saved some money buying the rifle, you should be able to configure it to your heart's content. Obviously right now, all that is contingent on you being able to find one in stock at a reasonable price. If you're in the market for a good multi-purpose entry-level AR and you see one of these going for even close to MSRP, you've pretty much got it made. Anyway, that's our show. Thanks for watching. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors Venturi Munitions and Top Gun Supply. Please give them a look. We are also supported by our viewers like you and you. Not you though, I, I don't know how you got in here. Via Subscribestar and Patreon. Links to both of those are in our video description. You can also find a link to our Discord channel, which is where everybody talks about James's shorts and anime. So, I mean, obviously don't click that. Alright, see you next time.